when it comes to disturbing subjects, demonic possession is up there. The thought that someone can be taken over and controlled by a demon is a scary thought. So here we have five absolutely terrifying cases of people seemingly being possessed by the devil. Michael Taylor Michael Taylor is probably Great Britain's most famous case of demonic possession. Michael and his wife Christine lived in a small town in Yorkshire, England. Both him and his wife were very religious and had joined a Christian prayer group led by Mary Robinson. Long story short, Michael's wife accused him of having an affair with Mrs. Robinson. She confronted them both during a prayer meeting, but they both denied it. It's unsure what happened after, but Michael Taylor began acting extremely erratic and out of character in the meeting. Many witnesses at the church were certain he was possessed by the devil. It later seems that Michael and his wife came to a mutual agreement and the thought of him having an affair was dropped. However, his odd behaviour continued for months until Taylor was certain he was possessed and visited a priest so that he could perform an exorcism. On an October day in 1974, the exorcism was carried out. Lasting over 24 hours, the priest was said to have removed 40 demons from Michael's body. But before returning home, Michael was told he still had a very evil demon lurking in his soul, far too evil to be removed by this priest. On returning home, Michael brutally killed his wife. At the time, it was one of Britain's most horrific murders. He tore out her eyes, tongue, and removed her face. He even killed their pet poodle. Michael Taylor was found by police, walking the streets completely naked and covered in blood, shouting, it's the blood of Satan. He was sentenced to life in prison and has no recollection of the event. George Lukens The case of George Lukens is unique in the fact he was claimed to be possessed by seven demons that could only be removed by seven priests. The exorcism became one of the most infamous demonic accounts of the 17th century. It all began when George started acting strange. Concerned he was possessed, Mrs. Barber, a friend of his, wrote a letter to a local priest, begging him to come look at her apparently possessed friend. The letter said that Lukens had slowly deteriorated both mentally and physically, often breaking down into seizures and growling at people around him. As time went on, the seizures got worse and he took on a supernatural tone. He began declaring in a roaring voice that he was the devil. On June the 13th, 1778, seven priests were rounded up and began a lengthy exorcism at the Temple Church in Bristol, England. As the priests opened the exorcism by singing hymns, George Lukens fell into a violent fit, barking and hissing at the men before shouting that this torment of George Lukens would be a thousand times worse for trying such a stupid thing as an exorcism. Following that outburst, Lukens was said to have cycled through seven demonic personalities during the exorcism ritual. He then roared out that he was the devil himself. In the end, according to the witnesses, the demons were sent back to hell and George was said to be ridden of this evil force. Julia. In 2008, Dr. Richard Gallagher, a New York psychiatrist, was given a very unique opportunity. He was asked by a bishop to provide a psychiatric evaluation of a woman who claimed to be possessed by a demon. During his evaluation, the woman, to whom he gave the name Julia to protect her identity, would be completely normal, but at random intervals she would go into a brief trance followed by a rage, during which she would begin shouting at Gallagher and the attending priests, screaming at them to go away you idiot and leave her alone. Objects would fall from the shelves in the room and Julia would start to shake violently. Then, like a light switch, she'd be back to normal with no memory of any of it. After the evaluation, the decision was reached to perform an exorcism by Roman Catholics, which Gallagher also attended to report the event. The exorcism began on a hot June day. Gallagher said that despite the weather, the room where the ritual was being conducted grew incredibly cold. Later, however, as the entity in Julia began to make strange noises, members of the team felt themselves sweating due to a burst of heat from Julia. During the exorcism, she first went into a quiet, trance-like state. After the prayers of the Roman ritual had been going on for a while though, multiple voices and sounds came out of her, one of which was an animal-like growl which seemed to be impossible for any human to mimic. At one point, the voices spoke in foreign languages, including recognisable Latin and Spanish, even though Julia could only seem to speak English. Julia was also reported to have gained enormous strength, and despite the religious sisters and three others holding her down with all their might, they struggled to restrain her. It was also reported that she levitated about half a foot in the air. The purpose of Gallagher's papers, he says, is to document a contemporary and clear-cut case of demonic possession. He explains that even those who doubt demonic possession exists may find this case rather persuasive. Roland Doe I did mention this case in my five terrifying Ouija board stories, but I just couldn't leave it out. It's the story of Roland Doe, who is famously known as the real story behind the novel and Hollywood movie The Exorcist. 
His case began in the 1940s, when after losing his aunt, 13-year-old Roland began using an Ouija board in an attempt to contact her. It was shortly after using the board that his family began to notice some strange things. The family heard the sound of marching feet, ordinary objects levitated and flew across rooms, and unexplained scratches seemed to appear on his body. Blessed objects such as vials of holy water and religious photos would also smash to the ground, with no obvious cause. It was after Roland was witnessed levitating in the air with his body contorted in pain that his family contacted a reverend. Reverend Luther Schultz put him in for medical examinations, but no physical explanation for these disturbing events was found. Roland then spent a night in Luther's home in order to be observed by him. The boy slept nearby in a twin bed and the reverend reported that in the dark he heard vibrating sounds from the bed and scratching sounds on the walls, alongside similar accounts that backed up his family's reports. Schultz concluded that there was evil at work, and the Lutheran rite of exorcism was to be immediately carried out. The first exorcism began, but Roland slipped one of his hands out of the restraints he'd been put in, broke a bedspring from inside the mattress, and used it to cut the priest's arms. The exorcism was immediately stopped, and Roland returned home with his family. The strange things continued, so the family moved to St. Louis, hoping that this would leave behind whatever was possessing their son. And while they were there, Roland's cousin contacted one of his professors at St. Louis University, Reverend Raymond J. Bishop, who in turn spoke to Reverend William Bowden. Together, both priests visited Roland and deemed him possessed by the devil. Permission from the Archbishop was given to perform yet another exorcism. This time though, regardless of Roland's struggle and violence, the priests continued, performing over 30 rituals, when finally they were successful. After the last prayers were said, the entire hospital heard Doe's cries of animal anguish, followed by a loud bang, and the reported smell of sulfuric odour could be smelt in the air. Thankfully, after the exorcism, Roland went on to become a happily married man and a father, never to speak of the case again. Annalisa Michael Annalisa Michael is a controversial case, as well as the subject of many fictional accounts of her tragic story, most notably the exorcism of Emily Rose film in 2005. 16 year old Annalisa Michael had a history of epilepsy and mental illness, for which she had often been treated at a psychiatric hospital. However, in 1973, she became suicidal and her illness seemed to worsen. She started to drink her own urine, spurred all religious artifacts and started to hear voices. Anna was also unable to walk past icons of Jesus Christ and refused to drink the water of a holy spring. Despite trying, medicine did nothing to help her. Annalisa herself begged her family to bring in a priest because she believed that she was possessed by demons. Though her request was rejected by her parents, it seemed they did eventually allow it, and two local priests began treating her. In 1976, over the course of about 10 months, the priests attempted to banish the supposed demons from her body by performing a total of 67 exorcism sessions, which was about one or two each week, some lasting up to four hours. By this point, Annalisa was refusing medical care, refusing to eat, and saying that her death would be a form of sacrifice for other people's sins. On July the 1st, 1976, at just age 23, Annalisa Michael died in her sleep. The autopsy report stated that her death was a result of malnutrition and dehydration from almost a year of semi-starvation, during which time the rites of exorcism were being performed. She weighed a frightening 68 pounds before her death, and the two priests and her parents were charged with negligent homicide. Now, here comes the even scarier part. Out of the 67 exorcisms that were performed, 42 of them were recorded on tape, and here is a short clip of the audio during one of them. I warn you though, this is very frightening. That really is disturbing. And that's just a short clip of what was recorded. If you're really feeling brave, you can find longer versions of the audio tapes on YouTube. So that's five cases where people are said to have been possessed by the devil. I hope you've enjoyed and thank you so much for everyone who is supporting and subscribing to my channel. It's awesome to see that people are enjoying my videos. Thanks again and see you in the next one. See